How did body painting come to me? Uh, Rankin and his wife ended up with my daughter book, uh, first uh, volume. Basically, she fell in love with it. Then my publicist was there. Actually, she gave her the book and then she was into it. She was so into it then that they ended up making a date for me to show up and <laughs> paint her. And then I got to know that I was booked <laughs> to do this. And then I went to paint Thule Valentine's Day. And then me, her, and Rankin just toasted it. Uh, we drank champagne and toasted it to our um, calendar. Now yeah, we decided to make a calendar together. And this is how it started. I fell in love with body painting after I heard what Thule said about the body painting process and how it was emotionally intense and moving and transformational. And touched her on in ways that, yeah, it was, yeah, it was not, you know, presented before. I mean, she didn't experience this before. I mean, she's used to being naked and getting painted. It wasn't her first time. So, but it was my first time. So, yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe there is. And then my publicist was really convinced that I was doing something that was outstanding or special or, yeah, like something that is, she, that she, She's really convinced that the world needs this and woman needs this experience. So she kept booking me for the next and the next. Yeah. So this is how I started. I really did not want to do it because I thought it was de degrading my art, you know, and just kind of like I was up here. I didn't want to paint models now and kind of like spend 12 hours making an art piece and then it's just gone. <laughs> it just wash, washes off. Yeah. So. But then it just kind of like, I don't know, it just, the more I did it, the more I really found so much medicine in it for myself and everyone else that was experiencing it. So therefore I was like, yeah, why not? And actually afterwards I stopped doing it because I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. But then after Corona, me and Frederick actually met five years prior to that. And we decided to do something because I really love his work. And I was like, okay, together we're going to do something amazing. But every time we make a date or we make a, you know, we arrange for a project and something happens and then it falls through and we never, we were, we, we were never able to, able to get it through. Yeah. But then Frederick's like, okay, you're in Ibiza, I'm flying in and we're just going to make it happen. That's how we, yeah. And then I got back to it. Yeah. But I've stopped for, I don't know, for a while. Why is that? Yeah. Because I was still kind of like. You know, because I got a lot of criticism for it as well, you know. And the thing is this, I don't really need that criticism, you know. <laughs> uh, I wasn't really ready to face that criticism myself, you know. And kind of like stand up and say yes, you know, for being naked, for being free to really let your inner child out, your inner beast out, your inner whatever out, you know. Like just let it out and yeah. confront who you really are under the skin. Yeah, now I'm committed to paint as many, <laughs> as many, um, as many humans as possible. I mean, not just humans, you know, I started painting horses, you know, and then now I would like to do an elephant project to raise consciousness around the elephants. I mean, I started doing this actually project with David Yero. Yeah, they, he's, uh, he's a quite uh, popular photographer that does, uh, that say, yeah, focuses on animals and wildlife. Yeah. Yeah, and we did one shoot together, and we were supposed to do many more. Yeah, you know, scheduled to do it around the world. You now with uh, as many animals as possible, <laughs> and then that turned out to be super expensive. <laughs> yeah, like literally super expensive. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, because it's so expensive to hire the animals, and then to hire the models, and then to bring everyone to location. And I mean, it was like we couldn't make a film basically. <laughs> so yeah, so we decided to put it on hold or yeah, until it's time again. I like that transformational process. And I love seeing the model goes from thinking that she knows herself to really discovering a whole nother part of her afterwards. I love that kind of like that uncovering the shell or just kind of like that breaking out of the cocoon yeah, process that ends up occurring naturally while we're doing this. Yeah, I mean, that's what I really enjoy the most, is that. 
how important is the photography in it? Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's left of what I'm doing. <laughs> so that's the reason why the photography becomes super crucial. Yeah, because my work is only as good as what Frederick ends up capturing. Yeah. So if Frederick doesn't capture it, then it's really not there. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, so the two of us being in sync, but that's another reason why I was yeah, I hesitant to do it just with, and not just with the photography team. I just needed to make sure that we really connect because otherwise, again, it ends up being a waste of time, you know, me working this far, this, this hard, this long, and it's in, it, everything is expensive. Yeah. You know? Like just, it's not an easy production this way. And then it doesn't come out. I've done it before. I've done it before. And the pictures at the end, I was like, oh my God. And I tossed it away, you know, everything. <laughs> so I raised those projects. So yeah. So that's another hard part, you know, is to find the right team. And now I feel like we are a dream team together and we're just continuing making the dream come true. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is it's really difficult for me because for me, it's like, I kind of like, you know, coming from a fashion designer, let's say background. Okay. I mean, um, it's not really about picking, it's not really about being dis discriminating against the body. It's more looking at what is going to be the best result in showcasing what you're doing. Yeah. So basically the hanger look ends up being the best way to show your clothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then there are the fact that the models are skinny and tall and looking like hangers, uh, just because that's what looks best to show the clothing. And it's just, it ends up being a professional choice, you know, beyond, oh, being against certain body types. And then, yeah, and then, so doing, we're doing this, I'm free, I'm free. I mean, it doesn't matter what you look like or how big are your hips, how big are your boobs, it doesn't matter, you know, just, it's your body, you know, and I'm not really trying to fit it into my preconceived idea of what the garment should look like. So basically it's just free going, it's free flowing, and it's all about really embracing the body. That's the reason why actually I find this much more meaningful, yeah, where I find now fashion to be quite superficial in that sense because at the end of the day you're not really wearing your own character or your own skin or your own colors you're wearing what i decided and the trend decided to be in this season that's it then you're just a victim to it, it has nothing to do with you with you yeah so that's the reason why actually i find this to be much more real much more sincere much more catering to the actual woman you know need not to the need of society of how the, how how we would like women to look like yeah i feel like i'm creating super you know so i'm not creating i'm bringing out the super female the super woman yeah which i feel like that's what our society needs right now we need women to be in their full power because i feel like yeah this is a good part of us of the destruction of uh, nature yeah is the destruction of the woman uh, of the feminine and what the feminine is about, you know, and trying to make the woman into a man, you know, which is, that's not nature again. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I mean, that's kind of like my more personal motivation in it is just giving the power back to where it belongs. So actually we can have balance, you know, because that's the only way we can restore nature. So yeah, I believe that's kind of like why it's necessary to be done. And this is kind of like the motivation they say behind my team pushing me to do it. Yeah, because they definitely experienced this empowerment working with me. And then they're like, we need to bring this empowerment to everyone else out there. And how else to do it other than through, what, through this at the moment. Okay, that's very interesting because I guess the criticism says the opposite that it's just about sex and pornography. What, what, what do you think? Which is really interesting, you know, because the thing is this kind of like, let's say, let's take it from a pornography perspective. Yeah. Uh, it's for me, it's like, it's very hard to get turned on by my images. You know, like I look at my images, I'm like, well, I'm like, do you get turned on? Like, do you get turned on sexually turned on by looking at these? Not really, you know, because this is the point. This is the point of me doing this, you know? 
saying, I believe we degraded the woman, yeah? We degraded the woman and made her into a sex uh, image, into a object, yeah? When she's actually the foundation of who we are, you know, of our society. So I'm like, what are we doing? You know, we're destroying ourselves, yeah? So therefore, we have to restore that, you know? And I feel like this process is doing that, is restoring that. So therefore, yeah, more of it. <laughs> Yeah, because of that, you know, because she's, um, she's in her body. Yeah, yeah, Nina is in her body, yeah. Nina is in body in her body, yeah. While most women are actually running away from their body, yeah. And afraid of embodying their body, yeah. And that's the reason why I feel like the way fashion is being conveyed or make or art in or the beauty, let's say, uh, industry, it's really dumbing down that part, yeah? It's kind of like, it's, it's taking that power away and making the woman into a doll, you know, into a, again, that sex uh, object, yeah? And how she should look, yeah? And, and I believe, yeah, with the woman like, or woman as Nita, it's rare and it's special uh, to, yeah, for a woman to be comfortable stretching beyond the limits in front of everyone, you know? I cannot even stand on stage in front of people, you know? So I'm like, so I'm like, wow, you know? Amazing, yeah, it's incredible. So I don't want to be part of that. I want to be a part of that. I want to empower women as Nina, you know? I mean, how does my art inspire me through fashion? I mean, the thing is this, Fashion ends up being kind of like a medium for me to showcase my art, yeah, to, to, to and sell it and to kind of like, and bring it to the conservative circle, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, because they want to consume, they want to feel the power of being able to consume it, buy it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so therefore my art ends up kind of like setting me apart as well from everyone else. Yeah, because I'm not just as a designer, I'm an actual artist that is bringing the art to the design. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, the thing is, this is kind of like, yeah, it, the environment that I grew up in, yeah, my art was suppressed, you know. I mean, my, all my art pieces were destroyed when I was uh, 12, 13, being accused of being possessed and channeling whatever, you know. And I was like, what the, f what? You know, anyway, so all my art, you know, like basically I was this, my art, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, my artistic side was literally destroyed. You know, I had to restore it after my motorcycle accident. Because prior to that, I was like, yeah, studying business and I was like, okay, cool. Uh, that's what my daddy wants. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I went to, yeah, I was privileged enough to like, let's say, go to the top schools in the U.S., but then I wasn't so privileged to actually choose my life at that time, you know, because that's the problem with rich. They want to buy everything, control everything, <laughs> so they want to control the kids and everything. So anyway, I broke out. <laughs> yeah, but this is kind of like, yeah, exactly, again, you know, because it ended up doing fashion out of like not being able to be an artist. So therefore, being a fashion designer was like, okay, cool, I can be an artist, but kind of like still be, you know, the family can be fine with it because I'm making money at least, you know, showing them that I'm not going to be a broke artist, whatever, you know? So, so yeah, so it was kind of like my way of being the artist, but without being the artist, you know? So, yeah, by being the designer, <laughs> yeah. Do you have a plan for it? on the future, anything you plan, because I heard that you don't really plan to them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, the plan is to go as far as I can go, you know, to not stop until I'm done or finished, you know. The plan is to, I mean, for me, it's like the plan is to transform the world, you know. I don't want to stop until I transform the world, you know. I've, I had this, I had this, I knew this since I was a kid, baby, actually, since I was a kid, when I was a kid, you know, when they asked me, what are you here to do? I'm like, I'm here to change the world. And then until my dad was like, no, idiot, you're here to be a lawyer. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Okay. That's a good plug. <laughs>